this album just really pays respect to not only Neil, but his body of work and everything he did, which is immense. You know, he, he really just, man, it, it's so, it's just so heartbreaking um, to think about how fucking great he was and how he is like the only person that didn't see it. All right. Hello, weirdos. This is the Weird Music Podcast. We're here with Mark from Circles Around the Sun in sunny Denver, Colorado. How we doing, Mark? Doing good. It is a beautiful sunny day just ahead of a snowstorm. <laughs> That's Colorado for you. Make sure you, you throw the tarp over the tulip bulbs down there. Yeah, all Don't those guys frozen. need to be well taken care of, I hope. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, Mark, got a lot of exciting things to talk about and some things that um, you know, exciting is the wrong word for, uh, but I'm really glad to be able to, to be here with you and, um, you know, have this conversation about, uh, everything going on in the, in the cats world. I know there's a cats in space live stream coming up next Friday. We're going to definitely, um, you know, talk about why that's so exciting, but, uh, taking a step back here, um, I was talking with Kevin before this, and he mentioned there's going to be a Neil, uh, tribute album, um, Again, man, my condolences. Um, just want to take a second and, and give you give you a moment, maybe to introduce that album and uh, just kind of you know take us through like through your perspective. Um, you know what's what's this been like turn, turning this next page? Well, it's been hard. It's been challenging, I should say. Um, but that's that's life in a nutshell. You know, um, we never planned circles around the sun to even happen. You know, it wasn't even supposed to be a band past a, uh, you know, a two day recording session, which netted us, um, you know, the fare thee well interludes for the dead music. Uh, and then we just kind of organically took things as they came. And if, you know, if people wanted to hear the music, we were honored to get to play together and to play music that came from that seed energy you know it's music that is intended to be sort of a a friend you know uh or you can call it uh it's, it's almost like a step from music you know music is like elevator music <laughs> you know it's just meant to improve the the aesthetic in the environment or whatever it's meant to just be a soundtrack of whatever is happening so that's that was really the intention behind that music and then we just took it um as it came from there so getting back to your question it is what it is you know and we're taking things organically still one step at a time it doesn't change the fact that i still think about neil every day you know and um I'm so sad and sorry for what happened, but that leads to bigger conversations of mental health, um, how our society approaches or hides those issues. And, um, you know, I, I do encourage people to talk openly um, and to seek resources and, you know, never think that, the end is imminent or there's no options for you as my you know neil did leave us um a letter uh not just us as a band but you know all of the people he loved that that he knew he was leaving you know and uh it shed some light on just how bad the struggle was for him and how good he was at hiding it <laughs> And that, that really, you know, again, talk to your people, you know, have those conversations and maybe it's just guiding them towards a resource that they can confidentially activate like music cares backline. So it's just a couple of big ones operating in our musical world. Um, and again, that it doesn't have to be a victim of our societal brokenness when it comes to talking about mental health or dealing with it it can be confidential 
you can just go and deal with it with a professional, another outside perspective. And that's, I think, ultimately what, uh, what it's all about is perspective, you know? And I personally actually, uh, had some experience with depression, actually even surrounding Neil, Neil's death. Um, but before it started, a few months before that. And I was actually on an antidepressant um, when Neil died. And I'm so grateful that it happened when it did, because for me, it was a tool that let me, uh, it was almost like my tires were spinning in the snow and I had no traction for months. I was, I was really trying to do everything right, you know? And I couldn't imagine the way that I felt like two weeks into using those medications, I couldn't even have imagined it before I started them. And I was super resistant. I didn't want to be on some synthetic drug that was going to, you know, whatever, <laughs> but it helped. And it, it was a, an incredible tool. And uh, it really like parted the clouds and let me get perspective again, you know? So that was my, my, you know, just like the, it kind of broke my, the whole thing apart for me in a way that let the air in and the light in. And it was, it was great. And I was actually going to wean myself off of it just before Neil died. And then I decided that wasn't, wouldn't be a good time. So there was a few more months and then I did end up weaning myself off of it. And, um, you know, but it's just a constant, it's a process, you know? And so I would just, I don't want to be preaching here. You know, I feel like I've been talking for like 10 minutes, but <laughs> I just want to encourage people to just be open and honest and vulnerable and do just do that, you know, and see what happens <laughs> because it's so hard. It's so hard. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. We're trying to yeah. do, we're trying to give, you know, honor. We're trying to honor Neil's life and give, him the respect that he deserves and uh continue playing the music that you know he was a fundamental part of creating so having scott metzger now on board is incredible just for so many reasons him as a person him as a player his personal story uh you know he knew neil very well um and we're totally stoked and honored that he is part of what we're doing now. So yeah, one of the first things that people are going to see <laughs> for those that didn't get to catch the 10 night tour on the East coast that we were able to just eke out before COVID shut everything down. This will be one of the first times that, um, you know, anybody sees Metzger with us. Um, at least I think so. I, but, I definitely haven't seen anything like that. Um, Mark, thank yeah. you for, like you mentioned perspective for, sh for sharing openly, like how that was for you going through that and, you know, mental health, it's totally something that can be taboo depending on who you speak with, uh, which is why it's so important uh, for there to be this conscious dialogue about it. Um, especially, you know, we're all, we're all trapped inside our minds and dealing with this and given what, what your band has gone through, it is such an insightful learning experience for all of us to see uh you know really how not, not only you you honor neil's life but are continuing forward um like you mentioned with scott mesker um there's a there's a tribute album in the works is that correct yes is that where you started with that question i'm sorry if i totally sidetracked i got i got a short but, memory i don't even know. <laughs> me too go figure okay <laughs> so um yeah this was a album that um gary waldman and dave schools initiated i I'm, i believe it was those two guys um you know two very important people in neil's musical and personal life uh gary was neil's best friend for you know 35 years his manager for many of those years i'm not sure of the, the exact number of years but it's you know, two of the most substantial uh, relationships that I think Neil really ever had. So for those people to initiate this sort of like massive call for all of it, seemingly like all of the people that Neil worked with, if they were willing to be a part of it, which 
there are some notable exceptions to that, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to be a part of this thing, but we, for, in particular, my experience, we got to record Circles with Billy Strings, which that track is already out there in the world. Um, but that track is part of this tribute mm. memorial album. And um, it's all Neil's music. A lot of people don't know Neil wrote so much music um, and was an incredible singer um, and songwriter. So this album just really pays respect to not only Neil, but his body of work and everything he did, which is immense. You know, he, he really just, man, it, it's so, it's just so heartbreaking um, to think about how fucking great he was and how he is like the only person that didn't see it. And, you know, but again, I hope that people can enjoy the music because it's incredible. And there's a lot of really amazing players on it. I mean, I can't even like begin to start to list all the players because there's so many. I mean, but, you know, to name a couple, Warren Haynes, Jason Isbell. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Check it. Definitely check it out. I'm sorry I'm not more off the top of my head. You got any record, kind of approximate time window this can be expected i have no idea no worries um, that's always a that's always a precarious question to try to know exactly when something's going to come out like that because it you know it started pre-covid and then it sort of continued during covid but in like separate studios and it's all being put together the two sessions that i did for it um was that billy strings one and then also there was another with like Tony Leone from, uh, you know, the CRB and uh, he's playing with Amy Helm now, I, I think I saw that, or maybe that's Jeff Hill he's playing with Amy. Um, anyway, um, lots of, lots of great players. And um, Jimmy Herring plays a, on, on that track. He wasn't wow. in the studio with us, but um, we actually got to go into the studio um, at, in California called Pliers, P L Y R Z, which is also the place where we recorded our last record with Neil, which, you know, was the last week of Neil's life um, in that studio. So it was really heavy going back there to record that music for that album. But it was also super cathartic and healing. Like, I don't know, you just got to you just got to be there as hard as those things are. You just have to be there, show up and be present. And there's amazing things to be gained as uncomfortable and difficult as the, those situations have been when we've revisited the trauma of losing Neil, it's really been incredible and cathartic. And I obviously hate that we have to do it, but that's like, you know, what are we going to do? Just be sad and upset about it or live our lives and just use the experience as some sort of motivation or inspiration. So that's what, that's where I'm at with it. And I think that that's what this uh, album, at least for me, that's, that's, you know, it serves that role and it, it fills that hole and I cannot wait to hear it because there's so much of it, like 90% of it, I haven't even heard anything. Mm. You know, I was just on like two tracks and it's long. It's a big, I'm not sure how many tracks, but it's a serious album. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a special project. Needless no to doubt. say, I want to zoom yeah. out for a second. Um, you know, you've mentioned backline music cares. Uh, it's no secret that being a touring musician, you know, really just being a person, uh, can be hard for mental health. It can be hard to stay um, in, in a good headspace. Um, but, you know, especially in the touring musician lifestyle, Mark, could you, you know, give us, give us a look inside the window on, you know, just objectively speaking, uh, what, what is it like as a touring musician? And uh, I mean, feel free to, you know, hide, hide no gruesome detail uh, of just how, <laughs> how rough it can be because oh oh my gosh i don't think 
many fans really, I mean, I sure as hell don't understand uh, like really all that goes into that. Well, okay. Here's the thing about touring. I mean, and I, I don't know if I'm a more common case or if, so sometimes people just go from like, I'm making a record on my laptop in my bedroom to like, I'm touring in a bus playing at stadiums or something. I would say that's probably the more rare version and it's all about your quality of life. Right. So if you're like touring and you're uh, in a bus or you're, there's many, 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 many levels of touring, I guess is my, mm-hmm. my point. So I started out, you know, like on the summers from high school into college and stuff, just like driving around in the Toyota Sienna, Sienna minivan with like my buddies. And we had this band and we just, it was called Frogs Gone Fishing. And <laughs> <laughs> we just played our asses off all over the place for like little to no money, probably, you know, at times. And we, you know, we bought like a couple different vehicles over the year. We ended up having over the years, we ended up having an RV, like a 1987 Mallard's like weird RV with the trailer on the back. And that was like the first time, you know, going from a van, you're toying around in a van most of the time. Right. So that's like, that's hard. It's really hard. You're not, you're not sleeping horizontally a lot of the time, <laughs> you know, you're, or you're, you're all crammed into some crappy hotel room or some, you know, it's gnarly. It's gnarly. And again, like, that's the, that was the beginning of my experience. And then, you know, I worked my ass off for a long time and eventually, um, you know, it was in some other bands that led to me playing in front of, um, other people. And then, you know, that's like the dream. That's always been my dream. It's just like work really hard, be the best drummer in person I can be. And then eventually, <laughs> eventually, hopefully somebody will pick me up, you know, and I can be in a band with them and they'll like elevate me. And, um, that was really Neil Casal for all intents and purposes. I mean, Adam McDougal, one night we were playing at the trap bar in Targi and I was playing with this band called the Congress, incredible band, really, really incredible band. Just, um, an example of how hard the, the business and the music world is. It didn't work out for me and the band and, you know, that's another story, but we were playing at this little thing and CRB had played earlier in the day. Um, the Chris Robinson brotherhood, which Adam was playing keyboards with, and he was just hanging out at the bar and he saw our show and he walked up to me after the show and was like, Hey man, I like the way you play drums. Like, you want to come and smoke a joint on the bus? And I'm like, hell yeah. You know? And that's really like, that's where I met Adam. And then we kept in touch and we got to play a little bit and, you know, he came through town with the Black Crows and then we did like a little weird, just improvisational, totally free recording session so he could get out of the box of playing that music, just do whatever. And then soon after that, you know, I really, that's when I met Neil mm. via the hardworking Americans and the Congress again was asked to open a whole run of shows on the West Coast. So that's where I first got to meet Dwayne Trucks and you know, once Neil, uh, well, Dwayne and Dave Schools and Todd Snyder and God, that, that band was incredible. But um, we were like following them around in a van and they were in a bus. And it was really, it was, it was hard to like keep up with the bus, you know. But I never got into this for the money. Uh, I never got into this for anything, but I just love music so much. I love playing music with people. I love, I just, everything that, I just, I love music, you know? So it was a, it was a choice I made early in my life when I was like 15 and I had no clue. I had no, no clue, zero, less than a clue about what it would actually mean to live a life of music. If you and could, it, if you could press pause and give yeah. any advice to that, that high school mark, you know, what would it be? Uh, I, I would just, the, the advice that I was getting at the, at the time that made me make that decision was follow your heart and do something you really love. Because if you can do something you love, you're not going to work a day in your life, but <laughs> right. Uh, I would honestly, 
I don't know, man. You know, I, there's been a lot of casualties in my life because of music. And uh, I don't just mean like Neil style casualties. I, I you know, it's been some relationships that haven't worked out because, you know, sometimes you're gone for six weeks and that's, that's tough, but it doesn't mean musicians are bad people or something, you know, we're just, uh, we live a very non-traditional lifestyle which difficult for me, logistics yeah for me it, it definitely is you know you're running around like crazy that's one thing that i hear from a lot of people almost everybody about the pandemic is that they enjoyed being home like i you know i slept in my bed more this last year than i had in, <laughs> in like my whole adult life <laughs> probably i mean it's the road yeah the road is hard but like once honestly once you get to the point if you can get to the point where your quality of life isn't so impacted, like on a day-to-day basis, meaning like a, that's why people tour in tour buses because mm-hmm. you get to sleep all night laying horizontally in your own bunk, you know, and a professional driver is taking you to the next place. So you're ready to go the next day. And then you have like, even the simple things like a refrigerator, <laughs> that's huge because you can wake up and have breakfast and like, the, the, that kind of, you know, or you're staying in hotels um, also. And it's, you know, it's not that bad, except for that you're not home, you know, and that means that's a lot that there's a many different, yeah. you know, yeah. places that the little Plinko ball can fall in terms of how your life is set up. And I know guys that have families at home and sometimes it, it works and sometimes it's really, really, really hard. And, I don't know. It's uh, it. I, there's what's the alternative? Don't do what you love. I mean, for me, it wasn't that the scales were like, no, do what you love. Screw everything else. Don't be a doctor or a lawyer in this life. Maybe you know, just do something that you really fucking love and that's super. I, I'm not like a risk taker kind of a person in general. I mean, I do. I ski in the backcountry and I, whatever, I guess I do some things that some people would consider risky, but like for me to make that kind of a decision at 15, I look back and I'm just like, fuck yeah, dude. Fuck good, yeah. Good job. You know, I thought I was going to be playing in an orchestra actually. Damn. I thought, you know, and I did, I went to uh, the new England conservatory in Boston for classical percussion. So I was playing in orchestras and wind ensembles, small ensembles and such you know, the guys you see back there in the, in the suit or tuxedo. Let me, let me press pause on this for a minute. You're bringing up classical music and that's an awesome segue into something I want to, you know, explore with you. Cool. I know you mentioned Adam and how that, that free form recording session you got to do, he got to step out of that box of the music he was, you know, playing on a regular basis and just freely create. Um, that, that brought me to want to, want to you know probe with you see uh you know from you what is that mental approach uh you and now your band you're an improvisational band how do you approach not only songwriting but jamming like like what is that like in terms of your mental approach um be present that's really the main thing because uh if you're you know the end people talk about the flow state mm-hmm. you know and you can you could enter the flow state really doing anything um but it's when you lose the sense that you are like it's your body you know you're just kind of in the flow you're you're working on a level that's a little deeper than just your like immediate conscious thoughts right so um hopefully you've done the work and you've practiced, you've figured out your technique and all the, you know, how to make a nice sound on your instrument and how to communicate with your instrument in a way that it's like conversational. So when we're talking about improvisational music, I mean, it really is conversational music in a way. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the conversation isn't happening. Like, you know, it's like all the people are talking at the same time, but we're creating this sort of like a tapestry or a carpet or it's like something laid out for people to, join us it's like okay you can come into this now because we've created a space that's not like threatening or uh 
visibly like, you know, oh, that's going to be uncomfortable if I go <laughs> dive into that or something. So, um, yeah, I would say being, for me personally, just being present so I can, you know, as a drummer, I'm aiming to lay down a, a feel that is conducive to other people wanting to jump in and like feel comfortable and then get to s say what they want to say without being like, oh man, <laughs> the wind, <laughs> without being like, oh man, this feels like shit and I can't do my thing because this guy's got a fucked up feel or whatever. I'm sorry if I'm swearing too much. Is this supposed to be PG? Yeah. Yeah, this is honestly for kids. No swear words. <laughs> hey, kids. None, none of that shit here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it's funny you ask that question um, because this past two weeks, I did some sessions up in Vail at this place called the Shakedown Bar, which pre-pandemic was a 200 cap, really cool little club in, in Vail. Um, and it now is... a uh, super rad recording studio audio and video and it's basically closed to the public and uh i did five sessions up there um with different bands but all of them i i included ross james um guitarist from the phil esch and the terrapin family band mm. um and uh one of the dates also had or two of the dates had todd smalley on bass who played with Derek trucks band for like 17 years and is currently with jj gray and mofro for like the last 10 or something and uh andy hall from the infamous string dusters on dobro so that was one band and then we did uh another band with keith mosley the bass player from string cheese and then just this week we had joey porter on keys and garrett sayers on bass from the motet and in all of these sessions but especially with garrett joey ross and i we made a point to just improvise, like go in with no plan. That was really an overarching theme of all these sessions was let's just not be exactly sure what we record because generally when you go into a recording studio, you want to have a really good idea of what you did <laughs> because it's expensive and like, mm. like whatever, all this stuff. But this is like totally not, that's not the point. This was just be in the moment, music for music's sake almost and just, uh, we took advantage of that. So this is all made possible by a, um, a nonprofit organization that was started by Scott Redner, the guy that owns Shakedown Bar. Um, and it's called MAPS, uh, Mr. Anonymous Philanthropic Society. And you can, you can check it out, gomapsmusic.com. Um, just really brand new, but super cool. There's going to be a ton of incredible footage and again all of this stuff he's like totally just you know one of them i was like okay i'll just play a group and i started playing whatever came to my mind at the time and it was ended up being like this 10 minute really cool kind of piece that came out and the bonus for us is that it's like recorded on six cameras with different angles and an amazing audio so it, it's like uh you know something to keep an eye out for totally different than anything I've ever been a part of. But the idea of just being there with these guys, like you put amazing people around you. Chances are some amazing things are going to happen, you know, and you're not going to be able to take part unless you're present. And, uh, honestly, I, I want to share that when I got called to do the circles, recording session the first two-day session uh it was like out of nowhere and neil called me it's like hey man i got this thing we're doing for the grateful dead and they want like this music for the set breaks and like i want you to play drums like are you down and i was like <laughs> you know just like <laughs> holy shit why the fuck is neil Casal calling me to do this session they could literally call any person they wanted in the world and, and because of my time, like with Adam and then knowing Neil, I guess they just felt comfortable. Like, Hey, Mark will do a good job. And I was like, kind of freaked out at, at the time to be completely honest. It was like the biggest opportunity I'd ever got had lobbed at me. And uh, I called my brother who's a professional musician. He plays bass, stand up bass in the Boston symphony. Mm. That's a, 
a very prestigious orchestra, a world-class group. And he won that audition when he was like 23 years old. So I was just, I kind of asked him, I was like, Ben, what, like, what's your advice? How do I do a good job here? Even though it's so seemingly high pressure or whatever. And he was like, dude, you cannot worry about any of that, any of that stuff. Why they called you? Am I going to do a good job? Am I ready for this? You can't worry about any of that. All you can do is show up, find your center and contribute. So that's what I did. And here we are, you know, still talking about improvisational music, you know? It, uh, so that's what I would say. Show up, find your center and contribute. And it's badass because the way I see improvisational music, it's like a, um, a microcosm of like examples for life. Like you mentioned, it's a conversation being present. Like it is so crazy how seemingly similar uh just like randomly being a human being is and how so many like microcosm life lessons are parallel in being an improvisational musician totally and you know what that's something i told i i fell in love with about music is i felt like i could align what i did for a living and also what i wanted to do just as a human being in terms of like my interaction with the world I mean, you know, we may not be making vaccines that are allowing us to get back to our normal <laughs> lives, you know, saving the world in that sense. But I do, after this time, I am more confident than ever that music is a really fundamental part of the way that we are human beings together. You know, it's, it's beautiful. I think it's one of the closest things we have to magic you know, actual magic, like the ability to do shit that we don't understand, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's amazing. It's really, I, I cannot wait until we can all get back together. You know, the communal aspect of experiencing music together live too. No matter what AI does and how good it gets, I just don't see the experience of seeing people play while you're there with them, with other people. That to me is just like, man, I cannot wait until we do nothing that again beats it. and just nothing, nothing beats it. I want to ask you beautiful. this now, Mark, yeah. we, we started off discussing just like how tough it can be to be a person mentally, uh, life wears on us. Yes. Touring musicians. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly tough road to get to that tour bus echelon. Um, but then, you know, we've also got people in all different walks of life. Um, everyone's got problems. You've got, um, you know, people have to wake up at 7 a.m., stare, stare at a computer in a suit from, from 8 to 6, um, yeah. and then they come home, do it all again. Like, um, what I'm trying to say is, is life can be really tough, and, and you just mentioned how really uh, implicitly embedded music is into just what it means to be human, uh, that cathartic experience. With that context, I want to ask you, like, from a societal perspective, what role do you see uh, the musician playing for culture? Oh, man, that is, you, you ask really good questions. <laughs> um, Thank you. I see because I've struggled with this at times because I'm like, what am I doing in society? Like, am I even you know, an important contributing member of society. And I think all artists, artists um, probably have to grapple with that at some point. Or maybe not. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I believe that musicians and society are able to help us find that perspective that I was talking about before. Um, no matter what kind of music you're into, it's you know, EDM or country or classical jazz, like you name it, there's somebody behind it with an intention. So I think that music has the uh, ability to, to do amazing things and musicians have the ability to impact their communities or the world but it doesn't always happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
um, I think it just comes down to the individual and how they interact in the world, just like any person, not just musicians. So I don't know. I, I really, I think it's not just like by nature of being a musician or having music in our society, are we going to reap positive benefits? I mean, I think it's about the intention, I guess is my point, you know? So, uh, I think there's a ton of potential, <laughs> you know, I think there's an incredible amount of potential. We just have to, there's a lot of things that have to happen. We've seen this firsthand. There's a lot of things that have to be in place in order for us to be able to go somewhere and enjoy music to the point where it can do what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that um, we can still do that and have the opportunities to have big impacts in our world. But yeah, I mean, mu music uh, is just another form of expression and we have many luckily in this world you know we have literature and visual arts and dance and you know there's just uh, so many beautiful interpretations of life just in all these different forms and uh yeah i don't know i hope that people can enjoy that and, uh, i think personally that it's really important you know that i know there's an ongoing sort of like struggle in probably any culture i mean i don't know it, it depends on how the culture values art and mm. that's a good point uh, yeah so you know in a place we uh, art uh, what we do is a luxury kind of you know mm -hmm. in a way uh but not for the people that do it you know as a living or you know so it, it, it may be a luxury like, for a musician to create music but many music bands would say it's a necessity it's a therapeutic need almost for them to consume it well thank you for making that point because that's the flip side right i mean and yeah that's what that's what i am you know that's what i pinned my whole life on you know, that being the case and um, really nothing, I hope that nothing ever stands in the way of us really being able to realize that, you know, and so far nothing has. I mean, you know, the pandemic definitely got in the way, but there was never, music never stopped you know, and music's never going to stop. I mean, right. Yeah. Nice, nice little nod to the, you know, the greats, one of the greatest. I mean, there's so much amazing music out there, you know, there, and especially now there's so much music I've never even heard that probably would change my life. So I'm like always searching and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's easy it's easy to sit here on a sunny porch in denver and you know talk about it but sometimes it's like dark and stormy and you're in like the hole of a dank cave or something and it's just like what the you know the world is crazy but in my life at least music has always been that through line it's like the it's the the, the rock the you know the sea anchor it's like keeping <laughs> keeping me from tipping over or keeping me from going too far in the wrong direction and uh yeah just i got i've got nothing but gratitude it's but you know sometimes things are going to be uncomfortable i i kept saying uh like i'm living my dream but dreams get weird <laughs> you know like and i really that's am. a lot I'm living <laughs> dreams get so weird and then mine for sure i'm simultaneously like when i i was like really dealing with some gnarly heartbreak and that that you know is tied into the depression and that part of our conversation but i was like in the tour bus with circles around the sun my band right 
like a band that I am an equal member of. And that's another amazing thing about Neil, like the way that he, he uh, just the way that he built the culture of our band, just by like that simple of a thing. He was like, yo, you know, we're all equal. <laughs> it, it sounds very minor, but it's actually like incredibly major. Totally. You know, but well, um, especially from a songwriting perspective. Um, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, I would like get into the bunk on that tour and like close the curtain and just feel like I was in a coffin or something. Like I was the most alone I'd ever been in my whole life. Meanwhile, like I've got these guys that I admire and like are legends in my mind. And like, I love these guys are like my brothers sleeping, like literally above me and below me. And I felt so alone. And that's what I mean by simultaneously living a dream and having it be really messed up, you know, but that's life. And that's, that's life. And you gotta, you have to be able to orient yourself towards the positivity. Cause if you, if you, and we have a, we have a negativity bias just built in as human beings. We're five or six times more likely mm -hmm. to focus on something negative than to focus on something positive. If they were like, so just being aware of that, it's like, you really have to work your ass off to orient yourself towards positive thinking. You know, gratitude is the number one way to get yourself out of depression. You know, I, I mean, just maybe I shouldn't say number one, it will help. Just it will getting help. yourself. A, yeah. Stop, stop looking inward so much and be, you know, outward. And if you can find things to be grateful for, that is how I've found to be incredibly powerful. You know, that's so, self-talk. It's, everything totally. stems from your self-talk and yeah, that we do it. It's, so it's our, we must be empowered to, to sway that to a positive direction because you know, our thoughts will, will sprout. Definitely. Mark, I'm so grateful that you've come on here and been so sincere, such insightful, um, just a perspective that you have, what you, what you've been through the way you approach music, man. It's, it's so awesome for me to hear. So thank uh, you. Thanks man. man. Thank you. Thanks for, Karen to talk to me, you know, I, I mean, I love talking about this stuff because what is life other than experience, you know, experience teaches us life doesn't really teach us anything beyond the experiences that we're having, you know, and learn from experience. Here we are. Well, thank yeah. you for, for sharing this with all of us. And before, before we wrap here, yeah. cats in space live stream, it's coming up on Friday. Yes. Tell us why we should be stoked. Well, it's, I don't think anybody has seen anything like this during this pandemic. We are all virtually together, even though we were all literally apart. And we're playing music um, together as best we could, even though it was weeks or months even apart. <laughs> and, and the way that it all came together, um, we're all so excited about it because it really was quite a while in the making we feel like it's a really high quality presentation for songs um so it's a kind of a you know mini little concert but it's about it's more than 30 minutes long i think maybe even 40 minutes or something don't quote me but mm -hmm. yeah i mean it is the closest thing you can get seeing circles around the sun live right now hopefully not for long so, hopefully you know. not for long how can fans <laughs> tune in you can go to fans Dot com fans belong here i think it might be actually fans.com fans.com i'll include a link in the description of this cool. um but yeah friday the 16th yep. fans.com cats in space yep, mark anything else you want to leave all the homies with all the weirdos um, man just stay weird you know stay true to who you are spread the love just be kind you know we got we got a long long road to walk and we just got to keep on Keep on walking the road, you know? I mean, what else is there to do? Just be kind. Be kind, keep on walking, and stay weird. Well, this has been the Weird Music <laughs> yeah. Podcast. Mark, you're a legend, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for, for man, being thank you. awesome, man. Oh, man, thank you. I appreciate it, really. Thanks for the conversation. It's been nice.